thanks for welcoming to uh, welcoming me to Seoul. It's great to be here, and, and the reason I want to do that is um, a lot of people when I when I talk to them uh, uh, for their first time about steaming, they you know they really just want to know what is steaming, and I can give them a very quick elevator pitch. I can say that Steemit is the first social media platform to ever be built on a blockchain where all the users are rewarded for, with cryptocurrency just for contributing content. They're truly rewarded with uh, a valuable commodity and money uh, just for doing things they were already doing on other social media platforms. There's a lot to unpack there, I think, and uh, there's a lot that, that went into making Steemit possible that I think is, is worth taking note of. Um, and the best way to do that is to, to make note of these things visually. So behind Steemit, there's an even bigger concept. It's the concept of the Steam blockchain. Um, and anyone familiar with uh, flow diagrams will rec uh, recognize the shape that I'm drawing now. It's your classic database structure. And this database structure represents Steam, the blockchain. And what this uh, database provides uh, to applications like Steemit.com is two things. One, it provides uh, a cryptocurrency, Steam, and it also provides um, content management, really a content management system. So what it does is it offers um, basically uh, three core things, uh, blog posts, comments, and uh, account names. And you might be wondering, well, you know, what makes this any different from, you know, any other social media platform? Every other social media platform, like Facebook, they have an interface, and then they have a back end. Well, this back end actually has a lot more uh, uh, specialized instruments that, that um, are needed to make it possible, that just never existed in any other paradigm before. And to make the cryptocurrency possible inside this database, there needs to be redundancy. Uh, and the way that happens is uh, you have a series of nodes or computers that are run by um, a selected and elected group of individuals from around the world. They run these nodes and they communicate with each other in set algorithmic ways to make sure that every one of their peers is running the same copy of this database. And if one of them is not, by chance, running the same copy of this database, then they get kicked out of this consensus mechanism. And they don't want to get kicked out because it turns out that while they were participating in this, they were being paid. They're actually being paid from this cryptocurrency system, Steam. It's programmed to pay them each time they successfully keep track of the ledger. So they don't want to get kicked out because that's like losing their job. So it's a system of incentives that propagates this network and makes the cryptocurrency possible. This is the first time, uh, with blockchain, for the first time cryptocurrency has been made possible in this way. This particular consensus algorithm is referred to as DPoS. That stands for Delegated Proof of Stake. And that's opposed, as, uh, that's opposed to uh, other consensus mechanisms like Bitcoins, uh, which is uh, Proof of Work, which operates a little bit differently. Um, so, you can see there's an innovative consensus mechanism. Um, there's a currency in here, that's pretty typical, but then there's also a content management system that's new to blockchain. That had never happened before Steam. Um, then there's another interesting mechanism that I think a lot of people in this room are aware of. Um, it's that part of this currency, Steam, is distributed to the end users writing blog posts through steamit.com. And what happens is, mechanically, uh, with these blog posts, is they get put on steamy.com, which registers them in a blockchain node that then gets caught up with all the other nodes, and then eventually, uh, through that process, it gets stored on the blockchain. And once it's on the blockchain, it stays on the blockchain forever, just like all the cryptocurrency transactions. 
and um, also uh, it waits another data structure, uh, which are uh, updates, um, where basically the users, other users, are reading the content and they're upvoting the content if they like it and they're downvoting it if they don't like it. The blockchain takes all that information, uh, the upvotes, the content, um, and a scheduled release uh, uh, um, of new cryptocurrency tokens, new Steam tokens, and it decides how to distribute those to the end users. So the major innovation, you can see we had to really dig down to figure out how all this works, but the major innovation here is that you have a cryptocurrency system where the cryptocurrency is autonomously distributed to real people doing very regular uh, activities. You know, before cryptocurrency came along, we were all already online, participating in social media in some way. But now when we do it, we are potentially being compensated for that activity. And if we step back and we think about that, you know, um, you know this is a very big concept. Um, and Steemit being the first to leverage it, I might say that we're at the very beginning of a revolution. Things may look very raw right now, but uh, I'm of the mind that in five and ten years, there will be thousands and thousands of websites that are integrating cryptocurrency to facilitate growth uh, of community. And this brings me back to the vision that I have uh, for my company, which is called uh, Steemit Incorporated. Um, I believe that you can use token technologies like Steam to tokenize uh, the entire content web. And that Steam as a blockchain will uh, continue to offer opportunity to entrepreneurs of all sorts. Whether they be content creators or community builders, um, they will be able to leverage tokens uh, to accelerate the growth of their company, the growth of their community, to potentially do fundraising. Um, and to monetize uh, their website and make their community sustainable. That uh, there's been incredible growth uh, for Steemit.com. Over the last two years, the company's only been around for two years, we've seen this website uh, go from being not known at all to now being a top 1,000 website globally. And more interestingly, I think for this room, it's actually a uh, top 200 website in all of Korea. So our growth in Korea has been um, faster uh, than it has been in any other geographic reason, uh, region. And uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to come to Korea so much was to figure out and gain insight into the fact that you know, Korea is, is outpacing growth in other places and why is that? By this point, two years into this experiment, Steemit.com is no longer the only interface building on this blockchain platform. Uh, this platform here, because of this node system, and th these, these nodes are called witnesses uh, that are running the software, all of the data that's in the blockchain is publicly accessible by anyone. There are no barriers to entry to tapping into this data. Simply run a node and you get a full copy of the data and you have both read and write access to that data. And what that means is that entrepreneurs may get the idea that they can build their own interface and plug it into the blockchain and leverage these two new data structures, the Steam data, the cryptocurrency data, and the content data, and then provide some sort of different graphical user experience here to uh, attract lots of users and potentially build a successful website. There have been more than 350 applications built on the Steam blockchain. That's pretty impressive and uh, is up there for being maybe the most applications built uh, on any single uh, blockchain ecosystem. Um, one in particular that I'd like to um, draw our attention to is called D.2. D2 is a competitor to YouTube. Um, they've been very successful over the last several months. Their growth is increasing at uh, uh, a faster and faster rate. Um, and they're also attracting lots of content creators from mainstream platforms like YouTube. Um, so what we see here is that an application developer was able to show up and leverage this existing technology to create a potentially killer application. And I believe that this process, uh, with the advent of cryptocurrencies like Steam, um, will become uh, more and more frequent.
So this kind of leads me to, um, you know, how are we going to usher in the future? How are we going to empower more entrepreneurs to leverage tokens to grow a community or to launch a community from the outset? So if I just bring us back to Steam the blockchain, we can see that uh, here's Steam again. Here's the cryptocurrency ledger for Steam, the cryptocurrency. What I've envisioned is that uh, Steam won't be the only cryptocurrency to usher in this future of a tokenized content web, where content creators are being rewarded uh, for creating uh, great content. What that's going to require is more tokens. And the way we're going to bring that about is by a protocol upgrade to the Steam blockchain um, called Smart Media Tokens. Smart Media Tokens is a token protocol that is, uh, for those who are pretty into blockchain, uh, related to, uh, and sort of analogous to Ethereum's ERC20 protocol. It's a, a piece of software that allows anyone to show up to a blockchain and create their own token with certain parameters for inflation and that sort of thing. But also in the context of smart media tokens, uh, an entrepreneur can choose different things like how uh, votes affect the distribution of, uh, of the token. So to visualize how that fits in here, if you've got Steam, the cryptocurrency ledger here, you might here have smart media token, SMT uh, for short, uh, SMT1, right? And you can start to see that other cryptocurrencies can fit into uh, this system. And what I expect is that other applications building on the Steam platform uh, will begin to leverage their own tokens. So D2, eventually in the future, will launch its own token, like SMT1, but they might call it um, something different. They might call it D2 coin or D2 token. And what this token will allow them to do as a company is they can uh, accomplish three uh, business goals that lots of businesses uh, seem to always have. One is fundraising, two is monetizing, and three is growth. First fundraising is through uh, an ICO contract. Basically, when you launch a token here, uh, there is business logic available in the blockchain that will allow you uh, to set up an ICO. And through an ICO, a project could raise money to become bootstrapped, or they could feel that they're selling their token because there's so much demand for it. And, um, you know, could kickstart their, their organization with, with those funds. Um, we also want D2 to have the ability to monetize with this token. Well, the advent of, of Steam uh, has brought about uh, an innovation called reward sharing that is uh, potentially a, a monetization model of the future. If we think back to how new tokens are constantly uh, distributed, um, like they would be with Steam, um, we can think that if D2, the creators uh, behind D2, uh, basically earn 100 tokens or 100 Steam, D2 would have the right to take a rate or a percentage of those tokens, and that might be, you know, 15% or 5% of all the tokens coming through. And because those tokens have value, just like all these other cryptocurrencies, um, they can use the value of those tokens to then pay for their operations or potentially take profit uh, uh, from their venture. And uh, that's a big breakthrough. The first time we're seeing tokens help create sustainable business models. And the third major thing that every business wants or every community wants is growth. Tokens are constantly being distributed to the end users who are writing blogs. These people over here, these people see opportunity. And when there's opportunity to earn, to be compensated for something, uh, the word uh, tends to get out about that sort of thing. So more and more people begin to show up to try the system, to play with the system, to see if they can burn inside the system. So SMTs, I believe, are basically an entrepreneur's tool to getting their business, getting their community kickstarted, up and running, and successful faster than ever before. Token technology like smart media tokens is lowering the barrier to entry for entrepreneurs everywhere, and that's why I'm calling STEAM the blockchain of opportunity.
It's opportunity for entrepreneurs. It's op opportunity for content creators. And uh, ultimately, I think it's going to change uh, the face uh, of the internet. One last thing I'd like to dive into is that there are a few features of smart media tokens that I think um, are very innovative uh, that take us beyond Steam in some ways. The Steam token has a couple properties, uh, quite technically specific here, but, but one of them is, is stake-weighted voting for allocations of rewards. Basically, in deciding how uh, tokens get distributed to people writing blogs, um, the blockchain calculates the upvotes based on how many coins the person who did the upvote was holding. And what that means is the more coins you have, the more steam you have, the more influence you have on the platform. And when we first set out uh, 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 creating Steam, what I wanted to see happen was that we would use cryptocurrency to help dictate where the quality content was in a system. And the idea was the more that a piece of content was being paid by a cryptocurrency system, the more uh, quality that content should be. And to prove that, you know, you would look at a system or a web page, and if you saw three articles, and the first one was paid 10 steam, and the next one was paid seven, and the next one was paid four, you would hope that they read them, and they say, yep, this is definitely the most high quality, this is the second highest quality, and this is the least quality of all the three. And if they do that, and their perception matches up the way that rewards were distributed, that means that you have an algorithm that seems to truly be identifying good content. Well, with, the, with Steam, we didn't quite find that that was the case. And the reason that it didn't end up uh, working the way that uh, I hoped that it would and imagined that it would was mostly because of stake-weighted voting, which basically gives uh, more influence to people who have uh, certain interests in a community. So what I believe to truly realize this future where cryptocurrencies are helping us identify great information is we need to uh, begin to leverage um, not stake-weighted voting, but account-based voting. Account-based voting means one person, one vote. Much more, uh, it's a much more democratic way of voting. And that, in combination with some of the rewards curves, um, so when, when tokens are being distributed, the blockchain um, is, is potentially distributing them on, on either a super linear or a linear rewards curve. Um, with a super linear curve like this, in combination with account-based voting, um, the idea is that the earlier a given person finds a piece of content that is of high quality, uh, the more they'll be rewarded for finding that content and upvoting it earlier than all the other people who end up upvoting it. Um, and if that's happening, then there's a sort of wisdom of the crowd uh, that is being manifested in the blockchain that is helping dictate uh, this sort of trend where the, the highest quality content rises to the top of the system as defined by the cryptocurrency. So, um, yeah, anyway, SMTs are going to have all these sorts of cool features uh, that allow and empower entrepreneurs to start great communities, niche communities of any sort. Um, and also, uh, they'll empower these, these tokens to uh, really um, help us make great products where um, cryptocurrency uh, is, is basically giving you know, the users of the internet, the readers of content, great information. It's helping us be effective in finding things that matter to us. Um, so, all in all, I, I really feel that we're at the beginning of a great age for cryptocurrency, a great age for content. You know, I think uh, with the, the Webtoon partnership uh, that we've put together with GoPax, um, you know, I think that uh, we've got a, a great example in front of us of how we can use cryptocurrency um, to impact uh, real people and, and make a real difference for our online uh, experiences. So, that's all I've got for now. So, thank you guys so much for having me here.